Cheryl, do you have a FTCC available? Any questions? Go ahead and claim, Cheryl. Would anybody else play it any differently here? Yeah, I, I think I would, especially with such a weak hand.
it's not a great spade suit, but uh, uh, roughs are the only thing that's going to make any value in uh, the north hand. So probably uh, two hearts transferring uh, to two spades in the sign off. I'm deliberately being quiet uh west east so we can just practice uh the bids that were discussed yesterday go ahead and claim uh With these hands, we're going to deal four, and then you're going to respond four. Malcolm, how many points is Okay, we're going to come back to this, but we'll keep going. Now, before I lead and have Cheryl claim, uh, the question for North is, did he really uh, want to transfer to clubs, or did he want to sign off in 3 no Trump? Yeah, Malcolm, and I'll tell you what, out of probably uh, 10 new people learning the system, nine would fall into the same trap you did, uh, including the partners I regularly play with. So you have to remember, just like uh, if we open with a week one no Trump, you can't invite with two no Trump, because we play four suited transfers. So what you got to use is a non-promissory statement here. And actually, at the two level, our non-promissory statement is a non-promissory uh, puppet statement, uh, because we do allow opener to hide a five-card major if he's strong enough to show his no trump at the two level, which means it's 22 points or higher. 
So I'm going to back up here. So folks, please take notice of this sequence. It's very, very common for a responder to fall into the trap where uh, opener does a Cambridge heart, or even if he directly bids two no trump after the one club opener, which would show uh, 22 to 23 high card points, there's a common tendency to go right to three no trump with a balanced hand. You can't do that. Three no trump is a transfer to clubs. Excellent. Any questions on that? Yeah, indeed. Well, if Malcolm wanted to transfer into clubs, he would have bid three spades, which is the transfer into clubs. And yes, you would super accept with three no trump.
you can supersept Any questions? Actually, yeah, the super set uh, for the minors is different from the super set for the majors, and the super set for the majors is differ according to whether it is uh, a spade suit or a hard suit. So in the case of a hard suit, you need to be uh, more of the maximum upper range with your high card points. Uh, and if we're talking about a major suit, we're talking at least uh, uh, four card trumps and uh, an honor in there. And the way we bid it is if we have a worthless doubleton, if hearts is the uh, suit we're transferring into and we have a worthless doubleton, what we will do is bid the suit below the worthless doubleton. If it's being a transfer into spades and you're going to supercept, you're going to show your lowest first round control. So if you're in a bidding sequence and partner, you transfer partner and your partner does not transfer into that suit but instead bids another suit, if it's hearts, he's bidding below his singleton or worthless doubleton, excuse me, and if it's a transfer into the spade suit and he bids a different suit, he's showing a super sept and he's showing he has a first round control in that other suit. And it basically starts a control showing scan. So you, in other words, you'll be qubiting. But with these more strong no trump hands, we use the same systems as we do with our weak uh, one no trump openings. We have the non-promissory statement. We have also. Uh, the two-way two-diamond bid, we have four suited transfers. Uh, if partner shows a, a real strong no trump hand that's at the two level, uh, like a direct two no trump after one club, or uh, Cambridge Hearts two no trump, we use puppet statement, uh, also non-promissory, uh, which is really asking if opener has a hidden five card major. Normally, we don't have uh, high five card majors, especially if it's a 16, 18, uh, no trump hand. Uh, I think most of us play uh, with 19 to 21. I mean, some of us play. Uh, we, we're allowed to hide five card majors with a 19, 21 high card point hand. But if we do so, uh, you have to have a system to uncover that five card major. And the way we do it is uh, we use our three club bid, uh, which is a jump, of course, after the Cambridge Hearts one no trump, uh, which is a game forcing hand. And it's basically a puppet statement. So in this case, it, the bidding. If you want to use a system like that, after one no trump, uh, Cheryl would bid three clubs, which is still statement, but now it's a, a game forcing puppet statement. In which case, Malcolm uh, 
Yes, same thing as a two over one puppet statement uh, over no trump. In which case Malcolm would have bid his uh, three hearts showing he has a five card suit. And Cheryl would probably just sign off. But the way we, got, we arrived here was fine too. Except probably uh, a lot of people would have supercepted uh, the two heart. He doesn't have a worthless doubleton, so the question is, well, what happens if you don't have a worthless doubleton? The same thing is with a weak no trump. Uh, you're going to either bid three hearts or two no trump. Uh, two no trump says you have a, another four card suit somewhere. Uh, three hearts is saying, I have no other three card suits at all. All I have is that one five. You could, you could here, and a lot of people do, Roger, because it's not at the two level. The no Trump is being bid at the one no Trump level, which means you're going to have difficulty showing you have a five card suit. What would Malcolm bid if he only had three hearts here? Uh, after your two club, um, no, open my one he's going to bid two diamonds. After your one spade, oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, if, he, if he wanted to show his hearts, uh, he would he would bid uh, two clubs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's 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 basically showing. Uh, he has a two suitor. He really doesn't have a balanced hand. We're just discussing that, Esther. Why he bid one no Trump? He does. He has this. He has the stronger one no Trump hand, nineteen to twenty-one. So if you're gonna hide a five card major in there, you need some way as responder to uncover that. And I just went through one possibility, and that is take uh, the three club bid, which normally won't be used for anything, after the one no Trump Cambridge heart response. Use the three clubs just as you would a regular puppet statement, which means it's game forcing asking for a five card. Uh, major. That does not work with the, with the direct one no trump, the 16 to 18 high card points, because how could really responder be game forcing with no more than seven high card points opposite uh, 16, 18 high card point hand. So if you have that type of one no trump range, uh, you don't really want to hide your five card major. Yeah, the system uh, counts the king, queen, uh, double ten as a full five points. We don't devalue the point range. Same thing with the queen double ten. Uh, you don't devalue it, even though it might be worthless. Uh, the only things we devalue is uh, single ten honors, unless the single ten honors an ace. Uh, did we claim this hand? If we didn't claim this hand, uh, we can go back and show you uh, another way of bidding it. Oh, we already claimed. Okay. Well, the standard way would be uh, one club, one diamond. Sorry, no. Uh, we didn't. Oh, we didn't? Oh, okay, then we can go back. Go ahead and bid one spade because you have to.
So now if you don't want to show a one no trump type hand or a balanced hand, you're just going to bid your second suit. Now if you have a six card heart suit with no four card suit, you just rebid hearts. So two hearts here would tend to show uh, a six card heart shoot, uh, suit and no other outside suit. Bid your cheapest three card suit if you don't have any four and you don't have a six card heart suit. So here uh, Malcolm would bid two clubs. It tends to promise four clubs, but the question you can go here, Esther, Brian would not play with you. I, I want to play with you either if you bid uh, two hearts here. You tend to get better results if you reserve the two hearts to show a six card heart suit. So you just have to keep in mind as a responder that if it's a minor suit, it might be a three card suit. So now Cheryl knows he has a five card heart suit. So Cheryl doesn't know whether he has 16 points or whether he has 20 something. Yes, Cheryl, you're inviting. So it, with even five points, there might be a tendency to invite. What you're showing there with the invitational is your upper range five to seven high card points, as opposed to zero to four. You mean as opposed to, oh, okay, over two clubs? The, the answer is no, and the reason why it's no, only two suits have been shown, a heart suit and a club suit. On negative sequences, many times 11 saw, three suit 11 saw shows up. But in this case, it's still a little premature to use it. So is the spade suit, yeah. So that's the system standard, as we just uh, pointed out. So thanks, Roger, for telling me to show everybody what the system standard is. I'm not paying attention to my leads either. I'm just hitting a card. Go ahead and claim, Cheryl. What happened to Malcolm? Is that the fourth hand? Uh, no, we're playing a little bit longer. Sit back down, Malcolm. Uh, the way I had these, you're actually, whoever sits is going to sit for eight boards. 
four is declare our opener and uh, four is declare four is responder. So we have one more hand. No, two more hands. Two more hands. Use the system standard, Malcolm. Go ahead, Aliana, you should be on. Yes, I am, but uh, I'm, I still don't have any questions. I just wanted to get ready. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, we're going to do this two ways. Uh, we had a Cambridge Heart uh, one no Trump, which again is showing 19 to 21. It is hiding a five card major. Uh, again, the system standard is not to hide a five card major unless you're able to bid no trump at the two level, which shows a hand that has at least 22 high card points. I think the vast majority of us don't play the system standard. I would always, with a, a 19 to 21 high card point hand, hide my five card major because I think it's a lot more informative to my partner to show him my high card point range uh, semi balance and he always has the option if he has seven high card points or six high card points even uh, to use a game forcing puppet statement as three clubs. If you, if you don't use that game forcing puppet statement jump three club bid, then I would advise you do not use that, just use the system standard. Yes, Roger, you do. You, you do need to talk. Uh, actually, I have a partnership checklist that goes like 25 pages. So once you've graduated from Oliver's class and have taken off 40 lessons, I'll share that with you if you want. Yeah, here it works perfect. If you use the system standard, uh, you're probably going to end up uh, in two hearts, or maybe even possibly uh, a 4-3 diamond. Uh, you could actually end up playing in a club fit 3-3. Three, three. So I, th I think these two hands back to back at least shows you, you folks 
uh, the advantages of hiding a five card major at the one level when it's a uh, Cambridge Heart one no trump. I would never do it with uh, a weaker no trump showing 16, 18. Yeah, you're going to end up playing in a 5-2 major fit. That is correct. So 1-0 Trump works much better here than 2 hard. Okay, I think we got another two hands for Malcolm, then we'll get another couple out here. Go ahead and play Malcolm. All right, Cheryl. So take note here. Uh, Cheryl correctly uh, went to three no trump, the correct one. If she would have bid three no trump rather than three clubs, that would be a transfer into the diamond suit, which was not her intent. So even though she doesn't have a four card major, the fact is she can't bid three no trump directly. So you have to use the statement bid, the non-promissory statement bid. So I hope everybody understands that. That's a very, very common thing to do, and it's hard to catch yourself not to do it, especially when you have a weak balanced hand with no interest whatsoever in any type of major. Uh, before we move to uh, board eight here, I just wanted to mention another system standard. Uh, it's important to have system standards because when we play other partners, we need to know what the standard is. Uh, so we're all on the same wavelength. Uh, Oliver asked a very good question yesterday, and it had to do with uh, opponent interference. And I don't know if it had to do with the inversion of a positive one spade response and uh, a responder one no trump response. Those two bids are inverted, uh, and the question well, the system standard is, and it's directly written on the web page, over interference that inversion ceases. So he asked the question about a double. Uh, the system standard is, after a double, that inversion uh, dissolves. That said, most people play uh, that it's still on. Not only after a double, most play over a one diamond overcall, and a lot play over uh, one heart overcall, too. But the system standard is any type of interference, not just an overcall, but any type, including a double, uh, that inversion 
uh, ceases to exist. And the inversion I'm talking about is the positive response of one spade and the positive response of one no trump. Uh, those two things are inverted, so no trump shows a five card spade suit, eight plus uh, high card points, and one spade shows a balanced hand, uh, eight plus high card points. No, the system standard is any interference. The inversion dissolves. And sometimes when Roger rewrites, it, I mean, excuse me, when Oliver rewrites his notes, because he does sometimes to update them with changes, uh, he will leave out stuff that he had before. So really, you need to be knowledgeable not only of what's on the web pages, but also what's been discussed in the forum, especially if Oliver comments on it. If you see a comment from me or Brian or Roger or any of the other people that make comments in there, uh, that doesn't change anything. It's Oliver's system. But when Oliver speaks, it's there. And he clarifies a lot of things in the, the forum. So the system standard is uh, the inversion ceases over takeout doubles, opponent takeout doubles, and overcalls. Okay, I thought on doubles it was the same. You acted as if there was no bid at all. So, my error. Yeah. Roger, if you don't see it directly on the web page, uh, as the inversion ceases, I mean, I'm not going to look it up now, but it, it certainly is in the forum. And if you uh, if you listen real closely yesterday, he did say it wasn't, and then he flipped his mind and said, well, if you wanted to leave it on, that's fine. Which is, which is, which is true. You could leave it on if you want, but that is not the system standard, just as if you leave it on over a one diamond over call or a one heart over call, that's acceptable too. But that is not the system standard. And and you'll see some positive reasons why uh, you might want to take it off after interference. But that's not part of today. Today we're just trying to get our Cambridge hearts down, our strong no trumps down, and maybe dabble a little bit with uh, unusual positives. Yeah, it was. Uh, but I don't think he wrote it down. What he did, he, he discussed it verbally with Roger. And his first response is, no, all interference the inversion's off. And then Roger specifically said again about doubles, and he said you could leave it on if you want. Well, you can also leave it on over one diamond over calls and one heart over calls, and a lot of people do that. Uh, I don't, but I know Brian does. I'm not sure about uh, Esther, whether you do or not. I'm not sure what Maisie does, but I do know what the system standard is. Anyhow, let's get to the eighth hand.
Usually the people that leave that inversion on over one diamond will also leave it on over one hard over call too. Because again, those either those two over calls, including a double, does not interfere with the inversion at all. And I think from a sensible standpoint, it almost makes sense to leave it on. But again, each time you make an exception, you make the system more complicated. So I think from a learner, learner's standpoint and what system standard is, it's off. I might need to revisit this one. Well, we're not going to repeat it because we claim, but go ahead, Cheryl. What was your other option? I, I, that's an aggressive option, Cheryl. Uh, in this case, it wouldn't have worked. Uh, but in other cases, it might have worked. So I think you were talking about, yeah, so you were upgrading your hand a little. Uh, and when you, if you were to bid three no Trump, yeah, it, it could very well be. And I think that's certainly another candidate bid you could use. The aggressive people out there would probably go for it. The more conservative people would probably do the puppet statement. Uh, I think this is a good hand for those. Uh, hopefully everybody's exposed to puppet statement. If not, it's a relatively simple uh, convention to use. So uh, a diamond response would say, I don't have a five card major, but I do have a four card major. 
in which case uh, the person who made the puppet statement bid would bid their major suit they do not have. If they did not have a four card major to start with, they would just bid simply three no trump. If they hold both four card majors, they would simply bid four diamonds saying, I got both four card majors, pick, pick whichever one you have. But typically it goes just like it does in this sequence. Say again? Doesn't Oliver bid four clubs for game and four diamonds for slam and bite? Uh, that, I think some people play that way. Uh, you could certainly play that way because think, if you're going to... I think he mentioned that. I think it's written that he plays it that way. And that's in stone. Yeah. Well, in this case, uh, the person who's using puppet statement is a, a limited hand. Right. So if I had 4-4, four, four, then I would bid four clubs to show that I was not interested in slam, but four diamonds if I were. Correct? Okay. That would make sense. Well, uh, Sonia brings up the point, there's no guarantee of a stopper in North End. Well, you know there's 20 points, uh, excuse me, at least 22 points in North End. And there's a very high likelihood uh, there's going to be some type of stopper in, in clubs. It's almost guaranteed. But I, I don't think after a three no trump, uh, South can pull that three no trump. It would be quite embarrassing, especially if uh, North had three stoppers, ace, king, queen, and clubs, and had a, had two losers in diamonds. So you almost have to make a call there. Are you going to bid? Uh, three no trump, transferring into diamond. In this case, you get a super accept. Well, if you transfer into diamonds, and you get a super accept. I think most folks are going to land in six diamonds. I, again, a I, I don't think there's a best option. I think there's two candidate bids here. Uh, and I like the one you chose, but maybe my conservative style play shows for it. There might be some other people that would transfer into diamonds there. If we were always able to determine the best option, this would be a very boring game. So is everybody getting a good handle on the stronger no trumps? We have basically a no trump response system that applies throughout the system, which includes non-promissory statement, two-way two diamonds, four suited transfers, uh, Texas transfers, 
puppet stamen, which were which it, if you play it like I do, always the three club bid by responder is going to be puppet stamen. Uh, even over uh, Cambridge Heart, uh, one no trump response. I I think it's impossible over a direct uh, one no trump response because you've already promised no more than seven. Partnerships only showing 16 to 18. It's a pretty crazy bid to do. Uh, but technically, it could be made if you have absolutely seven points and uh, no trump opener has a max, but he doesn't promise that. And if you bid three clubs right off the get-go, you're promising a uh, game-forcing hand, which you really can't do with a 16-18 uh, range. Okay. Okay, the fun may start here. Uh, let me ask every. Open up a new tab in your web browser and uh, open up that page. And hopefully I can help people who are brand new to this a little without it getting overly complex. You should see a, a scale with six steps by it. What I'd like you to do is where it says ace, king, or queen, uh, totally disregard that. Just view that as a top honor. So second step should just show an H, which stands for top honor, an H to the fourth. Fourth step should show HH, which is two top honors. It's not a specific holding. Okay, a top honor is ace, king, or queen. And I think it's confusing when you look at the scale in there when it specifically states ace, king, or queen. So there's six steps there. Actually, theoretically, there should be seven steps there. And this is the logic behind it. And if, uh, well, first look at, look at that scale, those six steps, and see if you see any rhyme or reason for the way it's drawn up. Hopefully everybody's looking at the web page for ETA responses. If you see the first step, it's always the weakest type of response or the weakest type of holding a partner can have. If you look at the largest step, it's always the strongest possible holding. And that type of logic goes throughout all the asking bids. Usually the cheaper step shows a weaker holding versus a response that shows many steps. That tends to show a stronger holding. In this case, we know there's only uh, four cards. So you can work your way through the system using your fingers. Actually, you need to use two hands, because we're going to count the seven steps, even though it only shows six there. If you have four cards, what is the weakest holding? Obviously, and when we say what's the weakest holding, we're using in terms of not having any top honors or having uh, top honors. And we're going to throw the jack in there also, not as a top honor, but just because that's a characteristic of an editor response, is whether we have the jack or not. So look at the first step. The worst we could have is four small spots or a jack 
and four small spots. The very best we could have is ace, queen, ace, king, queen, jack. That's not even listed at as a step. If that was a step, it would be step seven. But that is so impractical. It comes up so, uh, it doesn't come up often enough to even be legitimate step. So if that's gone, what would be the strongest uh, next step? That would be having the three top honors. So now you have the upper and lower range, and just work, work off the, the bottom end of the scale. So step one means no top honors. Because you need to use them uh, with these type of responses, Sonia. And it's probably the easiest system to look at. These are all going to be positive responses, all these other hands, which means you're in an asking sequence and you've got to use asking bid. For us to bid them naturally is crazy. It's not the system. If you, if you have these, that's the next response. There's only two type of responses. What, do we want to have some folks who want to sit and try this? Or you guys just want to totally disregard? And a one club opening, if you get uh, what we call an unusual positive response. And there is all the three level responses are unusual positives. They all show four, 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 one hands with 12 or more high card points. We also have three other bids that are unusual positives. Two hearts, two spades, and two no trump. They also show four, 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 one hands. Uh, in this case, they show our lower high card point range, 8 to 11 high card points. And the other thing unusual about them is we're actually showing the suit with the singleton. So two hearts over a one club opening shows 8 to 11 high card points. It's a positive response, which means asking bids are on. Any subsequent bids are going to be an asking bid by opener. In the case of two hearts, it's showing a singleton heart. In the case of two spades, it's showing a singleton spade. In the case of two no trump, it's showing a singleton minor suit. And we don't show a singleton minor suit at the three level when we're limited to 8 to 11 high card points. All the bids on the three level have 12 or more high card points, and we're bidding very thematically because we're bidding in the suit below the singleton. So one club, three clubs is showing a singleton diamond. One club, three diamonds is showing a singleton heart. One club, three hearts is showing a singleton spade. One club, three spades is showing a singleton club. And I think we've discussed why we want to do that. Sure. I, Sonia, these it's it's if anything just take it as a a, a primer for next uh, Saturday's class Again, I'm going to be quiet as uh, the opponents, West and East. It's 
So unlike the other bids, this is a positive bid. Asking sequences commence. So any type of bid uh, that opener does here is a type of asking bid, and it's usually a trump type of asking bid. In the case of all of these, the Trump asking bid is going to be ETA. And what ETA is, it's used when we know the opponent's suit or a partner suit is exactly four cards. We're able to do that because we know the distribution is one, four, four, four. So there's since an asking sequence, these there's two options here for there's actually three options, but two major ones for Sanya. The first option, if she chooses to do it this way, would be find out about aces and kings, which is called low beta, or she can make an ETA ask in any of the four card suits. So she knows that's hearts, she knows that's clubs, and she knows that's diamonds. So if she wants, she can make an edit ask there. Then if she wants, she can do what we call another ace-king ass, which is just a, a relay, relay bid, which is called relay beta. The other option here is to stop the asking sequence and just bid three no trump. So those are like the three options. So three, yeah, three diamonds is, sets the suit. But if you want and you're not interested in slant, you could bid three no trump. Because you know partner has limited their hand by eight to 11. Go ahead and uh, claim. So if you look at Sonya's hand, opposite 11, 8 to 11 points by partner, she probably doesn't have slam interest. She knows partner's singleton is in the spade suit. Douglas brings up an interesting point. North uh, could actually downgrade her hand and bid one diamond. I think most folks with that type of distribution are going to upgrade their hand. And you might find many folks making these unusual positives, two hearts, two spades, two no trump, with actually seven high card points. Oliver gives no specifics here with do we downgrade our hand for having like in this case the singleton jack 
he certainly would not count a singleton king. I can tell you that. But in general, uh, we do not upgrade our hands for extra length, nor do we uh, downgrade our hands or upgrade our hands for dummy points, which makes it sort of aggressive, but you can use your judgment. I mean, I don't think anybody would knock Eliana if she bid one diamond here. She would probably be labeled a conservative bidder if she did. If she would have made the two spade bid, and let's say uh, she didn't have the jack of spades, which so is just a spot, uh, some people might label her as an aggressive bidder because she only had seven high card points. It, Sonia, uh, Oliver would not count a singleton king as part of his high card point range. But he certainly would uh, count a queen doubleton as two high card points. And he would count also a king doubleton as three. So most of that is not part really of the system. It's your own judgment of your hand. And you're going to find some practitioners very aggressive, others very conservative, and some in between. So some folks are asking to go back to uh, Cambridge Hearts. That's pretty straightforward. We can do that. I, I, there's a mixture of hands here. I'm trying to give you a, a little bit more exposure to this. Sonia bid it, I think, the way most people would bid this hand. It's very common to have a, a four-card or five-card suit and a partner singleton. And then you have no interest in uh, uh, doing anything but bidding through, you know, Trump. Eliana or Sonia, do you have a FDCC card? So here, Sonia, you do not know where the singleton is, except it's in one of the minor suits. So that's perfectly fine. We're going to show you another option here, uh, Sonia, just to give you a flavor of the asking bid. So asking bids obviously cease once you reach game level. But let's let's say she decides to do an asking bid in spades, which is three spades. So three spades, here's an Etta 
Now, if you use the logic model, you don't need to look at that scale. So if you look at Eliana's hand, she has an honor to the fourth. That's always going to be a second step for Etta. And the way we use steps is step one is the suit above. Step two is two suits above. Uh, we count all suits, including no trump. So three steps will, in this case, uh, well, one, one step here would be uh, three no trump. Two steps would be four clubs, three steps, four diamonds, etc. Well, here's the question. Yeah, you, you can see the hand, but if you do an at a ask, that does not necessarily you mean slam. How many controls can uh, Eliana potentially have in her hand? She could have two aces and a king. Look in your hand, she possibly can't have two aces because you have three. And now you can bid four spades if you're not interested. And you just pass, Eliana. Sonia, if you were interested in slam after the four club bid, you simply bid the relay suit, and that's asking for aces and kings. If you're not interested, just get out of the asking sequence by bidding four spades. The other thing that helps you, uh, Sonia, by bidding the Etta is let's say she bid one step, which shows either a jack to the fourth or four small. Do you really want to play in uh, four spades? Or would you rather maybe play in three no trump? Okay. Even with four small. And you're probably right on these because you only have 16 high card points, but you could possibly have a lot more than you would be interested.
uh, one option, if you want to ask for aces and kings here, let's say you had a more powerful hand instead of 60 night guard board, two no trump, two no trump is what we call low beta, which is asking for aces and kings. Most systems, you have to wait to the four level to ask for aces and kings. Here we can actually ask it just going into the two level. Yeah, three no trump here is what you want to do. You know, you have no 4-4 four, four major fit, so makes it quite simple. And this is a very common type of response, especially when one club opener is at the lower end of their hand. Not saying your name's already on the list, Eliana, but I don't see you popping up as a speaker. Yeah, you should test it, Eliana. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Hello? Yep, we hear you loud and clear. May I ask a stupid question, John? No question stupid, Eliana. Why in all Go the ahead. system, why, in generally speaking, the system beats the suit below when we're trying to show a singleton or void, except here? There's a lot of different reasons. At one time, all these bids we kept hidden, and the only way to do it is sort of like uh, lie to partner. You would make an artificial negative bid, one diamond, and then you do something crazy like uh, jump in a suit after opener bids again. And then he'd scratch his head and say, well, geez, that sounds almost impossible. And that's how we would show these hands. Uh, so we took some other bids, which were marginal positive bids, and we replaced them. And it just works out. It's the only way. I think there's one other place in the system where you directly bid the singleton. But there's one nice thing about this. Let's say uh, you don't know what Sonya's hand is, but let's say she had ace, king, queen to the sixth in spades. Or let's say she just had ace king uh, to the six in spades. She has the option now of bidding your singleton suit. That is not going to be an ace king ask. Actually, in this particular case, that's saying, hey, we're playing in spades. I want to know if you have an honor. 
And it actually, your step response will tell her three different things in that case. It will tell you whether your singleton is a spot card, whether your singleton is a jack or a ten, or whether your singleton is actually a top honor. And guess which order they go in. Yep, the weakest is going to be the first step, the strongest is going to be the third step. And they come up frequently. You notice they're both major suits, so if opener does, the one club opener does have like a long major suit, and that happens to be the singleton, and they bid it, uh, that is automatically agreed as the trump suit, and the step response is showing really whether you have an honor or not in it, including the jack, possibly, or even the ten. If Sonya had stronger hands here after a two heart or two spade positive response, she could always ask for aces and kings by bidding two no trump. That's called low beta. She doesn't have to use uh, short beta. Well, she can't use short beta because if she bid the singleton suit, actually that's saying, hey, we're playing in that major suit regardless of what you have, and I want to know whether you have an honor in it or not. Well, there's really only one beta. There's different flavors of it. And of course there's a couple different scales on uh, beta. Please do not get put off when you look at asking bids, you see like a, a Greek alphabet. Don't let you don't let that frighten you. Okay? You can categorize those opening those asking bids into three categories. A Trump asking bid, a general control asking bid, or a specific control asking bid. And that makes it more, more sense of it. And also, don't get, be put off when you look at one of those asking bids. You see a whole bunch of different scales. You have what we call a foundation scale. And the others that play off it will make logical sense to you when you see in what situations they're used. So we're coming up to the exciting part of Oliver's class, uh, which, which is asking bids. And it's really what makes the system strong. So just remember, one club opening, positive bid, you're in asking sequence. So opener's next bid, unless they sign off, is going to be an asking bid of some sort. And most likely, it's a Trump asking bid. Again, uh, defensively, I'm ignoring the hands.
So Eliana here, you know, sign is four 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 one. Yeah, by we single tens in a minor suit. So if if you ask in a major suit, she's going to tell you how many top honors she has there. Or if you're not interested in playing in a major suit, you can just bid three no trump. So if you're looking at at a step response is good. Change those things on the web page to H's rather than Ace, King, or Queen. So, so Sonia said she has a top honor. That could be, if you look at your hand, you know that's either the Ace or, or Queen. Remember, she has only 11 to, uh, she only has 8 to 11 points here, Eliana. So if you're anxious for slam and you want to see how many aces and kings she has, you can always bid the relay suit, which is called relay beta. If not, sign off in one of the suits. Uh, I don't think you want to sign off in spades. Actually, Douglas, you're you're totally correct. We have a two diamond opener. We haven't covered uh two diamond openings yet. Yeah, she set the trump suit as heart. Now, you can get out of that. The only way you can get out of it is by making uh, one or two ways. One would be uh, a jump into another suit. A jump into another suit is getting you out of the asking sequence and saying, partner, this is where we're going to play trump. The other way to nullify trump agreement is there's another specific control asking bid. Uh, called an epsilon. If you do an epsilon bid in the same suit three times, which means an original epsilon, a repeat epsilon, and a further repeat epsilon, uh, that also uh, changes the trump agreement to that specific suit. Rarely used, but in some tricky bidding situations that will happen. So there we are. That that's normally bid at, using an asking sequence. Eliana's hand. She's probably not interested in aces or kings because she doesn't really have a strong hand herself. But she has 17 points there, opposite 811. Uh, granted, the diamonds is working well, ace to the fourth. Uh, so she knows her cards are working well. Uh, but still, sometimes it's just not enough. And one of the reasons why this doesn't work is Eliana has a single 10 in spades, and that doesn't work very well at all, because 
all of Sonia's hand, uh, points are in the singleton suit there of Eliana. If this were to open uh, a week two diamonds, uh, the bidding would go, again, this, it's all artificial, two diamonds, uh, two no trump says, uh, no, two diamonds, uh, two hearts, basically saying, partner, do you have uh, 16, 19 high card points, or do you have uh, 21 to 23? Excuse me, 20 to 23. And of course, Eliana would respond, uh, two spades showing the lower end. And then uh, another forcing bid is two no trumps saying, well, where the heck's your single 10? She'd show it in the, by bidding the suit below, which would be three hearts. And then uh, we'd end up in four hearts, the same place. So you haven't been exposed to that, but that's the way the bidding would have gone if it was a two diamond opening. There is ETA responses with a two diamond opening, and again, it has to do with the four card suit. Obviously, a one club in a three level response shows the four, four, four ones, so Trump asking bids would be ETA because it promises a four card suit. Uh, actually, you can use ETA as responder in a weak one no Trump opening. If partner opens with a weak uh, one no trump, we bid stamen, uh, opener shows a four card suit, and we have a super strong hand, what we can do is edda then in that major, and we do it by bidding the opposite major at the three level. So when we, we do asking bids, when we specifically address edda, Oliver will address that. I'm trying to think of some other eddas that come up. The most common is what we're doing right here. That's the most common use of ETA. And ETA, as a Trump asking bid, doesn't come up all that frequently. Uh, there is the common asking bids, but that's for another day. Let's do some more hands. Okay, this is one of the weird ones. So not only are these unusual positives, but they're unusual in the way we uh, play them because uh, two hearts is showing a singleton. It's not a singleton in spades. It's actually a singleton in heart. And actually bidding the singleton suit here does not constitute short beta. What it's saying is partner. I want to play in hearts, and I want to know whether you have anything to contribute with your singleton there. Is it an honor or not? And one of the reasons why we can do this in lieu of short beta is because if Eliana really wanted to do a beta ask, she simply bids to no trump. It's low beta. So, Sonia, I don't know if this is Okay, good. So, you know, it's just a spot card, Eliana. 
And I think you knew that anyhow, looking at your head. So Eliana knew what the response was even before Sonia pulled out her card to show one step response. I take that back. Actually, uh, if uh, Sonia had the 10, she would bid two steps. So the second step is Jack or 10. Uh, maybe she wants to know if you have the 10. Yeah, because if she jumps to four hearts, that takes you out of the asking sequence. Probably would. But let's say she was missing uh, the queen. And not only was she missing the queen, let's give her a stronger hand, such as maybe the ace of clubs, uh, maybe the ace of spades. So basically, I just wanted folks to see uh, if you bid the single 10 in these unusual positives, uh, that it's not short beta, that it actually agrees trumps. Go ahead and claim. Yes, that's correct. And if that jump takes you above game, uh, that's a sign off. The, the other option after your three spade bid, and this, this might be another reason why you just don't jump up to four hearts. After your three spade bid, that agrees trumps. You can now do the relay bid, which is relay beta. So if Eliana would have bid three no trumps, that's asking for your aces and kings. Which might be valuable information to her. Or, or since trumps have been agreed, she could epsilon in a different suit. So if she didn't do the relay bid and bid one of the other side suits, that would be an epsilon bid. Now, just to make sure that we haven't forgotten our Cambridge heart.
Sonia, do you classify your hand opposite a 19 to 21 uh, hand as minimum, invitational, or game force? Good. How would we do it if it was a, a weak uh, no trump opening? We normally use stamen with a minimum invitational. We'd use two way two diamond with uh, a stronger invitational. So go ahead. Note you can't bid uh, two no trump directly here to invite because that would simply transfer into diamonds. Nope. After a statement bid, we don't bid. If you don't have a four card major, what do we bid? Two diamonds, just like regular statement. So this is saying, partner, don't bid a game unless you have 21 high card points. We got Oliver here. Let me put Oliver on speakers. I guess I can't do that since he doesn't use the web version. Sonia, you fell into the trap.
non-promissory statement. It's actually going to be non-promissory puppet statement. Well done. Hopefully everybody who's uh, watching in realizes why you can't directly bid 3 no Trump when you were sitting in South Seat that last stand. Yes, Sonia. So over the three no Trump, uh, one club, one diamond, three no Trump, or even if it's Cambridge uh, Hearts, three no Trump, uh, the system still stays the same. Yeah, puppet statement, we, you have four suited transfers. Obviously, the Texas transfers become regular transfers here. So, Eliana, Sonia showing a balanced hand, very, very strong.
26, 27 high card points. Your hand could help her out, but it's not going to help her out in no trump. So your regular transfers are still on here, Aliana. Hearts is a transfer to spades. Diamonds is a transfer. So four hearts is a transfer to spades. You're the captain. Well done, Eliana and Sonia. I don't get this. Uh... John, what would be the advantage of playing four spades instead of three no? Well, three no, you absolutely are going to contribute zero tricks to uh, Sonya's count. Your five card spade suit, even if you could promote uh, two spades to winners, you're never going to get in your hand. Where at least you could rough maybe a heart because you have a double ten in heart. So at least you get one trick out of there. Versus none. So yeah, you, you may not be able to rough or you may, there may be no need to rough in heart. But at least you have potential to rough in hearts and gain a trick that way. If okay. the opponent's okay. at. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. I was seeing my hand as, as balanced, opposed to balanced. But yeah, now I see your point. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, even if uh, Sonya only had two spades, it goes back to the thing again. You're not going to contribute any tricks at all in No Trump, where at least playing in spades, you might have the potential to at least get a rough in there. And you can get more than one rough. Actually, you might end up with three roughs. I have to share with everybody uh, an, um, probably my most embarrassing hand ever played. Uh, my partner was Fred Mitchell. He's no longer a partner with me because I think he's taken on uh, tennis more. But when I originally learned the system, he was my regular partner. And this was the first time we played together face to face. And it was in a regional tournament. It was probably in Fred, his name is Fred Mitchell. This was the first time Fred actually played over the board in a regular tournament. So this was maybe the third hand we had in the tournament. He picks up a balanced hand. Guess how many high card points he had? 28. He had 28 high card points. Actually, he had 29 high card points. 
So the bidding, uh, and I had, uh, I think I had a queen and two jacks, something like that. I had four points. Uh, the bidding goes one club, of course, one diamond by me. And since he had 29 high card points, he bids one heart. What do I do? I pull out my green card. So, of course, the opponents pass, pass. And, I, you know, most people, at least their face would turn red, or they'd slam their cards on the table or something of that sort. But Fred did not lose any demeanor at all, none at all. He just smiled, his face color stayed the same, and he said, thank you, partner. And, of course, I realized my mistake. And I think there was like 70-something boards that played that hand. Everybody was in 3-0 no Trump. Nobody would have been in slam. Obviously, if he would have Cambridge Hart 3-0 no Trumps there, I would have bid 6-0 no Trump easily, and we would have been the only ones. So we ended up with a very bottom board instead of the top board. Uh, but happy endings. We finished the tournament in second place, even though we had an absolute zero and a very big tournament. And Fred continued to play with me afterwards. John, speaking of big hands and uh, uh Considering we we cannot play everywhere our uh, two no trump opening, there's a there's a, uh, an exception to one club in the notes uh, at the website that says you can open two no trump with 26 to 27 points balance hand. Why do we need a special bidding for such a particular hand? Uh, that no longer applies. Uh, I think you maybe found that in the document section as opposed to the web pages. So there's a, there's a documented book. I forget when Oliver updated. It's very hard to update when the system's like alive, and the system is an alive system. Like recently, these unusual positives that happened within the last couple years that Oliver changed the system around to incorporate those. And if you guys come up with your own, own ideas and you guys have wonderful brains, uh, Oliver might consider changing the system further, and it might further evolve. But he always has to counterbalance complexity with simplicity, especially of, in regards to new people learning the system. So it sort of goes back to what we were talking about at the very beginning when I told you guys if the opponents double, the system standard is that inversion with spades and no trump is off. Even though it might may not make logical sense to a lot of people, especially since it really doesn't interfere anything, that was done at a simplicity sort of more than anything else. So you just have to realize what the system standards are and, and go with them. So uh, to no trump, uh, is it does not show 25 to 26 high card points. If you're playing ACBL, what I would recommend is it showing 11, 15 high card points, exactly 5-5 five, five in the majors. Uh, it comes up more frequently than using the, the preemptive uh, minor suits where you're 5-5 five, five or better, 8 to 9 high card points. A lot of people use that, but that comes up very infrequently. Also, using the exactly 5-5 five, five helps out immensely with uh, one spade openers. Uh, there's a lot of good positive things about that. So that's what we use it for. Of course, the responses are, are a little bit tweaked uh, also versus uh, our multi to no trump opening. Let's get some more hands in here.
I think Oliver mentioned yesterday with the Cambridge Heart uh, system, lots of times uh, the field, the rest of the field, if you're playing in a tournament, are going to end up in two no trump, maybe passed out, where you're going to end up with the same high card point range at the one level passed out. They're going down one you're making. That has happened many times in tournaments I played in. Uh, also, with very strong hands, that hasn't come up, and I obviously flubbed it. Uh, one of the few times it did come up is the field's going to be in three no trump, and you're going to be in slam because you're able to show such a strong hand at a low level. Most people don't know how to do that, so they just end up being three no trump, and a partner with a weak hand passes where we could bid three no trump. Uh, and if it's Cambridge, partner showing 28 to 29, and us with just five points, nowhere in slam territory. So there's a lot to be said about the Cambridge Hearts uh, system. Yep, that's what Fred was hoping to bid. Should I explore slam here? Uh, you can if you want. It depends uh, on your hand type. You know your partner has 28 to 29. You can't use an asking bid, uh, but you can start uh, showing controls if you so desire. So if you wanted to show controls, Eliana, what's your cheapest control that you have? Yes, excellent. So that denies a control in spades, but it's saying, hey, you have a control in clubs.
Well, any other questions? Does anyone else who's been watching want to sit that hasn't had a chance? Okay, folks, see you next Saturday. Did and Oliver? Excellent, Oliver. excellent explanations, as usual. Is Oliver still around? Yes, Oliver's still around.